Now, I already have a video out there for FSX uh, on Windows 8, but I thought I'd fire up 2004 because a lot of people have that. Uh, and this is a dual purpose video. At the end, we talk about multi monitors, so you may want to hang in for that. The real sophisticated people have multi monitors and extra hardware, but we're just going to try to the average user up here to set up. So we're going to go here to the display settings and uh, go over here to hardware. Make sure this is set for your standard monitor, that you, whatever your monitor's standard resolution is. Uh, this particular monitor is 1920 by 1080. And we're going to go ahead and set that up. And you can change uh, some of your other settings here as well, uh, do all that kind of thing. But uh, basically, you want to stay with the standard stuff for now. Just uh, make sure it's running great. So uh, we get all that set uh, setting completed, and we just simply... Uh, click on the OK here at the bottom so we can uh, configure some other stuff. So once I uh, did that, I just want to go on over here and I want to make some other changes. And uh, you can go ahead and select, oh, then I want to go create a flight. And as you can see, uh, they have the different aircraft here. I usually change aircraft and I'm sure everybody else does. You can do your drop down and select your different kinds of aircraft. And as you can see, we'll click on a few here. And you can see that they all display uh, pretty much uh, fine. If it's not a modified one, it uh, should work in Windows uh, just fine. So you go in here and you can change your set, all your other settings as well and say fly now. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and quit because this is the single screen version. We're going to switch over and take a look how to run this under dual screen. And you can see here I have dual screens on my system and it's set for landscape mode uh, which means and it says extend the desktop I'm going to say keep changes so I have two screens side by side so we'll switch over to that view this is uh, the same computer just as a second screen enabled one on the left one on the right one left a little bit larger resolution so we're going to launch uh, Flight Simulator 2004 and uh, again working great into Windows 8 uh, here it is here we can see where you can still go back to the start screen which is no more than the start menu just expanded uh, for all you naysayers out there. So let's go uh, look at the desktop again. And as you see, it's still running over here. And we're going to go uh, take a look first at the configuration, just for the people that are wondering about how to configure Flight Simulator. I didn't have to do a thing. Uh, as long as I'm on Windows 8.1, I haven't even applied the 9.1 patch to the Flight Simulator yet. So you can go in here and adjust all these and uh, do whatever settings you want. But basically, you want to click on Hardware. Now, this is a fairly old car. This is a 9800 GT, but I also have this running under a uh, 580 GT, which is a fairly new card on a different quad-core processor. Uh, so it, it works really good. Now, you may have to have a patch for that, but you can just adjust all these settings and play with them, and you'll get Flight Simulator working uh, perfectly well. As a matter of fact, so well, we're going to look at here in a moment. So after you're done configuring all this, we're going to just click on OK and go back to uh, Flight Simulator. Uh, to go ahead and uh, get it to run. Uh, uh, let's go back up to select a flight. Oh, you know what? Uh, we'll go up here to. You can do it. You can do these, but let's go create a flight. And I'm going to choose uh, my favorite aircraft. I'm going to go up here. And uh, again, let's uh, take a look at some of these aircraft. You see, they all change fine down here in the uh, display window, so you can preview your your aircraft and everything. And so you can come down here and look at the large jets as well. So let's uh, scroll down here and go to the, uh, not that one, it's the Curtis, I believe. Um, we'll get to that. Uh, oh, there it is. Now, this is a sport aircraft. It's a quick, pretty quick aircraft, responds well. You can do acrobatics with it. I love this aircraft, play with it all the time. Um, so I selected that for my flight. Now you can go in here and change all your settings. If you're an advanced flight simulator person, you might want to do all sorts of things here uh, and do all that. You can change where you're at. You can change uh, everything here before you launch your flight. So once you have all that uh, ready to go, all you have to do is uh, click on Fly Now to launch it and start the uh, start to load the program. Now, Flight Simulator 4 loads pretty fast. Flight Simulator XSX has a little bit of problem, not a problem, but it just loads a lot more files, a lot slower loading for some people. It depends upon the situation in your system memory. But here we are in Flight Simulator. Uh, we have it in uh, a large mode, but however, it's still, we're in a window still. And that becomes important later on when we talk about it. It's not in full screen mode. And you can switch on. You can switch around doing that. We can look at different views here, just like Flight Simulator could ever before. So, but we can go to the menu system up there. But first, I'm going to switch over to. I happen to like 
the view mode of spot plane because spot plane I'm a, a recreational flyer I'm not one of the flight simulator guys so I like to use a spot plane and this works perfectly the little bar there to drag actually in uh, flight simulator X this doesn't uh, uh, actually in Windows 7 this doesn't work correctly there's no bar to drag so but here it works fine uh, we can set up our distance and you can say the, the type of transition you want that kind of thing. You can set it as fixed or looped. Uh, I like it uh, fixed, but uh, we can try different different settings. It depends upon what you want. So once you have that setting, you just click on OK, and there we are. We're looking at the aircraft from the rear at about 20 feet above it. So uh, now uh, I want to position some other windows here to be able to use the, the program. Uh, for those people who want to take a look at other things while the, the program is, is running. So you come up over here to Views, and I went to Full Screen. You'll see there's no menu bar. The problem is that if you're in full screen mode like this, you can't use your other monitor because you're, you're locked into this screen here. So you can't use it with uh, other, other windows and other views. And I'll explain that here uh, as we go. So I'm going to go back up here to the menu bar again. I'm going to go back. Uh, I'm going to bring up a window right here. And you notice I can move that around as long as it's in be inside of this full screen mode. I can resize it and move this window. But it takes up a lot of uh, space. And I can't undock it. So what does that mean? It means I can't drag it uh, anywhere except within this uh, area here. What I want to do is be able to use that right-handed screen. So I'm going to bring up the menu again. I'm going to change the view from full screen to regular screen. And now when I right-click on this view, this extra view that's here, and I say undock, it has its own bar. It has its own controls. And lo and behold, I can drag it across over here and place it uh, on the other monitor uh, area. So we can do that repeatedly. We can, uh, we can either change these views dynamically by just right-clicking on them and change the view there. Uh, from virtual, This one was from regular cockpit to virtual cockpit. Uh, I happen to like the look of it. But you can also go over and create other views as well. Now, there's uh, main, these, these main views, uh, four views, are the spot plane, which we're looking at, and the big screen. We're looking at the, virtu the virtual cockpit. This is the tower one I just brought up, and there's the tower. It sees us there on the runway. And we can undock that, and we can bring that over here and have the tower watch us. And we can come over here. Uh, oh, I can come over here and go to the views again. And there's the top down view. Unclick, right click, and say undock, and cross the boundaries of the monitors again. Put that over there. As you can see, these are all updating uh, as we move in between them. And you'll see that later on when we start to uh, start our flight. Uh, so now we have the three main views. Now these are views. These are not these are not functions per se. They're just different views of the same function. Now, besides these these views here, you have actual new functions of the software that aren't really uh, considered a view of the same aircraft view. Uh, for example, here's air traffic control. So if you want to use the air traffic control function, which a lot of people who are sophisticated, not like me, but are sophisticated flyers, want to do that. But we can do the same thing with this. We can right click on this and say uh, undock. Now, if for some reason, it pops up behind. And also, you'll see that once we get, get it out here, that the menu has moved to that function and not to the spot plane. So the, the spot becomes a uh, a particular uh, a window of its own, just like the other ones that have no um, controls on as far as the menu. The menu has moved off to the right, but that's okay. We'll put the spot plane back over here on the left-hand screen. And then we're going to just clean up a little bit. We're going to move this a uh, little bit better view over here uh, the way I want it. And we're going to go back over here to the air traffic control, and uh, I'm going to activate a couple of functions, punch some buttons here to start the uh, air traffic control function. Uh, so you can see uh, how that works. And uh, we're going to go ahead and talk to a tower. So we're going to leave that running in the background uh, so you can hear the air traffic control. And how you can respond. And you know, flight enthusiasts know all about this stuff as far as actually uh, responding correctly and following the correct flight plans and filing the flight plan and all that. But another screen we're bringing up here is the control panel. Uh, now different aircraft have different control panels, if you're not familiar with the flight simulator. And uh, we're just going to put that off there for the time being. And then we're going to come down over here and go to another menu uh, item. And then we're going to bring up the uh, radio panel and put that down there. 
and make it a little bit bigger so we can see it. And then we're going to come back uh, up here and look at for one more. Oop, and go look at one more. And for those who didn't know it, even back in 2004, uh, GPS was available. So there's a GPS panel for the aircraft. So this is the uh, display setup. Now it's not sized correctly and all that, and you can play around with this as you like. Move these around, do some of them, but not all of them. All depends upon what you want to see in your second window. I'm, sc I'm scrunching down these controls because that's going to be my panel that just controls uh, the menus. So that's available to me all the time. So now we're going to do a little housekeeping uh, again. Uh, move things around to where I might want to see things a little bit bigger. And you'll notice as I move this around. And Flight Simulator does a really good job of scaling. Once you drag, it's a little blurry as you drag it, but once you let go, it rescales the images very nicely. Uh, the gauges will appear clear and crisp. And uh, really nice simulation. So once you have this all set up the way you want, and have your gauges and everything, you can uh, uh, do whatever. You can, uh, by the way, the gauges, see if I clicked on smoke, smoke appears. Uh, it looks a little bit better when, if you're flying. But all these gauges here, you know, the lights, the uh, all the functions that if you hover over the gauges and the switches, and that, they'll let you know whether or not they are usable. And of course, you can uh, very detailed in the way Flight Simulator works. I'm very disappointed that Microsoft stopped making this program. Uh, but Flight Simulation was a very big, uh, uh, very big in the Flight Simulator community. So once you have this all set up and everything for your aircraft, you put it all in here, and uh, then you're ready to fly. Uh, now, this ch changes depends upon what aircraft you have. These panels, of course, will change. Uh, if you load up a larger aircraft, it may have more functions, or a, a custom aircraft might have custom functions. So just get it set up the way you want to have it. So now that we have that done, we're just going to go ahead and go back over here, and we're going to actually go fly the aircraft. Uh, so I'm just using a keyboard here. I don't have a joystick or anything, so I'm just going to power up and take off. And you can watch all your panels on the right-hand side your speed indicator, your altitude indicator, of course your other visuals from the, from the tower. Everything updates as the aircraft up to, after, as the aircraft takes off. Uh, your GPS look at everything updates. Uh, very, very powerful stuff going on here. Uh, much more than the, even a simple, uh, uh, some of the earlier video games. For this being done in 2004, it's actually quite impressive. So here we are, we're taking off and we're flying. So we're just going to do this for a while. But I'm going to switch over to a different aircraft. Now I'm transitioning here to a little bit further in my flight, so I've got a little higher, a little bit uh, further along so I can actually uh, not crash the large aircraft because, of course, I'm going to a certain speed. When I switch the aircraft, the speed doesn't change, so I'm going to be flying a large aircraft here uh, at a speed of a low, air, uh, smaller aircraft. So I want to have a little bit of altitude to recover. So I'm going to go ahead and choose uh, the larger aircraft here. And what's important to note is when you do that uh, and you say OK, it loads up the aircraft, and those other panels don't exist in this aircraft, so they've all been, they've all shut down. And you have to put them all back. So, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, uh, do that here. Now you'll see that I've got the other instrument panels for, that are particular for this aircraft that didn't exist on some of the other ones, or are completely different looks and everything. For the one they loaded up, and we configured that, so we can use these during flying. Uh, so you'll, you can sit there and now operate this aircraft from uh, the screen combination. Now what I've done here is I've added in the air traffic and activated the air traffic control function. So we're doing that. So what's important now is that we're going to take a look at how you can use this program. If you're a flight enthusiast and you want to have a long flight, you can actually go up over to the uh, desktop. You can move things around. You can put it over here on your second monitor. You can leave it over on your left-hand monitor. Uh, you can do whatever you want with that, whatever uh, view you want to do. it. But let's put it over here for right now. And you can say you can operate the programs over here from your desktop screen. Or in Windows 8, you can click over here and go to your Start menu and launch a Windows 8 application on your other screen. Now, it's important to note that while you're on the left-hand screen and doing something, I'm launching Internet Explorer over here and doing some searches, that the aircraft is still flying over there in the background. I can view this in the desktop. I can do it from the desktop as well. I'm, I, aircraft works. Everything's working. Until I put focus back on those windows on the right-hand side, uh, I'm in other programs. And I'll go back to here, and I can check finance. I can do whatever I want during the day while maybe a two-hour flight's going on. So uh, to demonstrate that, we'll go out here to the Internet Explorer again, 
we'll come over here. We can go to MSN and check the latest news. Uh, we can go a uh, more interesting place. Uh, we can check the stock market, like I said. Uh, we can do other things. We can go to other websites and do stuff, all while our aircraft is flying. As a matter of fact, uh, let's go to a really interesting site here. Let's go to... I, maybe my YouTube uh, with all my videos in there. So you can go there. Uh, you can go anywhere, anywhere you want. You get multiple tabs. You can do the same things you would normally do with that while your flight simulator is running in the background. True on an older machine it might tax it, but this is this machine this is on is running on Windows 8. It's got a SSD it's running off of. It's running, uh, it's got uh, 4 gig of memory. It's an old quad core. Uh, a and it's got a, like I said, an older NVIDIA graphics card. So very powerful. Windows 8 is extremely powerful, making use of a good uh, older version of the operating of the hardware. The operating system can run a software like this, Flight Simulator. I can switch between windows. I can do all those things I want to do. I can go back to just doing this after I'm done in Windows 8. I can do whatever I want, all from within the confines of uh, uh, this Windows 8 virtual world that we were inside of. So, enjoy Windows 8, enjoy Flight Simulator, and uh, have fun uh, with any software really you want to run a Windows 8. Don't believe the naysayers. It's a great operating system. You can do anything you can do in Windows 7, but much better. And don't forget to subscribe to Old Guy Geek. Have over 150 Windows, Windows 8, and Windows Phone 8 videos, and any more every day.